my own president, uh, you know, Joe Biden, has literally ha has said on two different occasions that the states that are held by Republicans that do not embrace his election reform uh, rules, that they are, quote, no better or little better than the totalitarian regimes of the 20th century. Now, <laughs> none of us take that seriously because we all know that Florida and Texas are not run by Nazis and communists, right? No one takes it seriously. Because we're all familiar with the United States, not just me as an American, but you as an Indian, everyone in the world is familiar with the United States. I don't hear an outpouring of concern that an international company shouldn't invest in Florida or Texas because these are now totalitarian states. After all, the president of the United States himself said that Florida and Texas are totalitarian regimes. How could you possibly invest in such a place? Well, we all know not to take it seriously. The problem is we're much less familiar with India. And so when we hear a very credible Indian intellectual who may be a professor at Harvard, or we hear an anthropologist who's a professor at Stanford, or we hear a leading Indian author saying that India no longer has any democracy. Narendra Modi is a fascist. He's a dictator. When we hear these epithets, well, we don't have, most Westerners don't have any basis on which to evaluate them. We don't know whether to take them seriously or take them, as the print said, in, as the print put it in my own article in the print, take it with a grain of salt, that, that it's not to be taken seriously. And, and that's a real problem. That's a real problem for India, that because of our ignorance of India, we take these accusations seriously when, when we hear Trump is a fascist, you know, Scott Morrison in Australia is a fascist. We ignore it, <laughs> you know, because we know it's not. We know it's not true. We know it's just political hyperbole. We don't know that for India, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm.